Hello, Let's everyone. <laughs> Stranger and I are standing here at Sakurajima, and we are about to take the Kintsugi tour. We were waiting to see if any others were going to join us. But if not, let me go ahead and get us warmed up, right? So let me show you the content from the conference. And of course, this is where we're standing, right? Um, I'm eight slides into the session that I gave at the Open Simulator Community Conference. And this is a design by Spinoza Quinnell, better known as Dr. Andrew Stricker, who couldn't be with us today. He's going to try to connect via... Uh, Zoom, but he's not sure he would get out of his obligation at work. So what we're looking at is we see uh, Sakurajima, the volcano. We see these five stations, and they are mirroring a design we did last year called, for the Ikigai principles, which are the principles that help you to live a wonderful and centered life, right? And we were thinking about how we recover from COVID and from loss and <clears throat> in our group, over a three-week period in 2021, we lost 16 people, including uh, Dr. Barbara Truman a few weeks later. And so we were very sad. You know, there, there's no other word for it. Eight of them were children who came to the farm where this, this uh, network is located and would spend time with the farm family, with the animals. And on all the animals there are, are pets. They are family members they're they're not food <laughs> so so um it, it's a wonderful place and and located there is virtual harmony which is our our grid and of course we run many grids at virtual harmony um probably 18 or more different grids but this is one of them and it's called sakurajima and it is named after a place in japan where one of our researchers was born and so we were helping her get back to her roots we were also trying to heal after such extreme sadness and loss. And by the way, stranger, your microphone's open. So I just want to let you know. Uh, and of course, I'm going to get messages. I better close email. This is the last uh, two days before final grades are due. So those of you who are educators know what I'm living through. <laughs> And I taught 15 classes this term. So I just closed all of them except for the last two. And then Good I have two gracious. others that'll continue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Crazy, right? So um, so I bet this is all nighter mode, right? And I am in Colorado. Uh, uh, I know I'm here on, on camera. And that's what it looks like outside because it's been snowing. But it's about to warm up. So the ground's about to lose some of the snow. But... Uh, it's been pretty wild over here, and we had an intense fog, similar to the clouds up there, and you're looking at Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs. So here we are in Sakurajima, too. And that's what I love about virtual worlds. So we're not going to stay in the slides, but let me give you a little context before we go around the stations. For those of you who may have missed our session, the, the thought here is these are contemplative pathways for the wounded healer. And what we're thinking of is healing our inner spirit. We're always carrying a little bit of grief with us. Notice the heart right here. And you see all this little gold work here. That's what Kintsugi is about, is repairing something that's broken and making it a thing of beauty. How do we make our lives a thing of beauty after you know such a horrific event that affected everyone around the planet well uh, so we, we are building on this japanese term we're building on the roots of francisca yanakura uh, who's frankie antonelli in the virtual world and she's one of our fellow researchers from the university of central florida now they're working for a living right whereas me i'm just grading <laughs> so i'm hosting the session today and you'll notice all the, the lovely pottery here. As you go through the stations, you too get to break the pottery and rebuild it. You know, So that's the goal as we go through these five stations is to, to understand this contemplation we're going to have and how we overcome this painful experience and come up with, and I love the image of the cup of tea, you know, because... Um, you know, even the teacup, you know, is a thing of beauty after it's been broken. 
and repaired in this fashion. Now, this is building on some research, and you have to realize we're geeks, right? We do a lot of reading, <laughs> and this is building on Henry Nguyen's research from Notre Dame, you know, from the university, and also his work at Yale and Harvard. And he uh, is, is a contemporary and a friend of... Um, or at least an acquaintance of Dr. Stricker, Spinoza Quinnell. And Spinoza was so taken with his book. And of course, we lost him too. So uh, so we are extending our understanding of empathy and altruism and acceptance and having a forgiving spirit for everything we do. You know, and so we think about that. These are the five principles of Ikigai that we featured in both our our last year's design and in our VR app that we created for the Meta platform. Uh, and we, what we did was we took Sakurajima, this region we're about to explore, and we um, took the good parts of it, put, pulled it into Unity, and created a VR app from it suitable for the Oculus or the Meta platform. And that wasn't easy to do because the thing on your face that you wear when you wear a head mounted display device is like an Android app and it's very small. And Sakurajima is two terabytes of content. It is very large. <laughs> so how do you fit a large thing into a small thing? Well, you have to make choices. You you don't obviously stage all of your experiments and you, you don't get the full panorama, the full experience. Um, but anyway, these are the five principles that we're going to discover in the five stations. I don't know if we're going to cover all of them today, but um, I love them. And for those of you who watched the movie Zombieland, right? Zombieland had the rules. Remember the rules? And they were on the ground, you know, like seat belts and things like that. Well, right, it's also right. um, finding joy in the little things. That was one of the key ones towards the end of the movie. <laughs> and of course, it was the... what. Okay, if you saw the movie there, James and Stranger, do you remember what the thing was that the Woody Harrelson character desperately wanted all throughout the movie? You know what it is. It's a little snack cake, right? <laughs> oh, no, a Twinkie? That's it. He oh, wanted my a goodness. Twinkie. <laughs> and all throughout the movie, he's, his quest is, and when he finally gets one of them, it's finding joy in the little things of life. And that's, a, that's, the, uh, that's, that's kind of the moral to that story. But it's pretty funny uh, that Zombieland featured it, too. Uh, so here's the grid map. And this is where we're standing. And of course, I'm not going to stay on the slides. I'm going to move back to the stations. We're going to wander around them and see what we can discover. And I'm going to take on the role of a usability tester, which is my role at Virtual Harmony. I do less physical design here, although I can and love it. Uh, the reason is Andy is fast. He uses Cheetah, he uses Hexagon, he uses uh, maybe Maya a little bit, but he uses a lot of different tools to very quickly model in 3D, in, in mesh. And when I say quickly, I'll say, Andy, I need an airplane that I can crash and hold a simulation of, of crew communications on and how we survive a real life crash. And next thing you know, in a couple of days, I have an airplane that I can crash, you know. <laughs> in mesh so uh and 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 he used to do this quite quickly and he has a day job you know this is the tinkering we do in our nights and weekends right but anyway and so we're going to go to these stations and explore it and we're going to let stranger also be um our test subject as well you know experiencing this lovely place and instead of showing you more slides i'll just give you the link to them let's do the share right and I'll just copy the link. Done. I'll put it in the text chat for now. And we'll, where we put the video, we'll put that link with it. Okay. So you have a copy of the slides. And then here's the poignant thought that, that goes through our minds as we're building and experiencing this simulation. I am a wounded healer. When we dismiss people out of hand, because of their apparent woundedness, we stunt their lives by ignoring their gifts which are often buried in their wounds. The compassionate life is the life in which we believe that strength is hidden in weakness and that true community is a fellowship of the weak. That's a quote from Henry Nguyen. And of course, we think about um, 
that as we go through the experiment. And here I was testing it a couple of weeks ago, right, with the team. Uh, what you see on screen is um, Algernon Loire on the far left, myself in my spacesuit as my OS grid leader, um, Spinoza Quinnell in, of course, a kimono, and uh, Francisca Yanacura, who's Frankie Antonelli on the far right. And this is her homeland. So without further ado, let's move on over into Sakurajima. Okay, Stranger. and uh, so yeah. Joyce has joined us. Oh, good. And uh, I've I've been on the grid, and I don't see anyone looking for us. So I may Here, also I'm come gonna and join the I'm going to grab the people. Okay. Okay. So well, uh, yeah. So uh, let's. I'll share. Um, oops, I have copied the wrong thing. So of course we need to share with Joyce the URL, and we're. We are not publishing this to the public, so my apologies. And the reason is because um, uh, we do a lot of experiments here and a lot of classes with students, right? And of course, we don't want to, um, uh, due to FERPA and other rules, we don't normally mix uh, students and non-students. Now, I will tell you right now, I don't hold any FERPA-related conversations in world. I teach in world, and I've taught 60 classes. What we do is we focus on design, testing, the concepts, um, the deep probing skills, why this matters, that kind of thing. We save all of the housekeeping of education onto the course platform, you know, and, and handle it there. Uh, that way we're always good. Okay, so James is here and Stranger's here and uh, Rhiannon will be joining us in just a moment. Well, let's go ahead and, and start moving forward because I know the recorded part, we're probably going to keep it kind of short. So, whoops, I went the wrong way, I think. Yep, mm -hmm. I went back home. <laughs> Those are some cabins for if those who are just looking. you go the wrong way, at, we'll all go the I wrong did, way. I did. You know, this is my home at Sacrajima. And what's so cool is Andy creates homes for all of us everywhere we go. Let me show you what I mean. And here I will extend my draw distance. Oh, it's at 128. That's because I installed a, I'm on a, a different viewer. Actually, I'm on the contraband one. I need to upgrade to the 17. Uh, and I've been using the Alpha as well. Uh, mm. You can't see the cruise ship from here, but there's a cruise ship out there. That may be why we landed in the water, is he pulled it up when he replaced it with the mountain. Anyway, the cruise ship is huge. It has 10, ten cabins on it, same as the 10 cabins behind me. <laughs> so we all have our own cabin, including delightful Duwango. Hers is still here, her home. Oh. Yeah. And we missed Delightful. Uh, that was Barbara Truman, Dr. Yeah. Barbara Truman. Um, she was one of my graduates and, of course, an active community member, a researcher in transdisciplinarity. And uh, she believed in the power of these worlds for education. Well, you went too fast there, stranger. This is the first station. So we'll let James be. The, oh, you're oh, coming back. Good. Yeah. See I that see piece boss. of pottery? Yeah. Well, you go near it and you look at the signs for just a moment. Andy's big on signs, by the way. So um, you'll notice here's the early parts of our slides and it explains why we're here. Then you look at the, um, the it says click to receive a contemplative pathway. And anyway, go ahead and click it. We'll watch and see what happens. It's the sign right over the pot. Um, okay. Stranger. I, I see. Yeah. Yeah. You just left click. Sign over the pot. Oh, okay. I get you. <gasps> oh, my. You broke it. <laughs> oh. What? That's so Andy, right? He has you break it first and then it rebuilds, reforms. Okay. And notice all the little magical qualities coming out of it yeah. <laughs> from the gold. Yes, yes. When you do this, you should get a copy of it in your in your um <laughs> Yep, I did. I did. In your inventory, yes. And of course, um each one of these has a theme. I don't see it going back to so maybe you have to click the second sign or click the pottery. Make sure you pick up your pieces. See if you can click the pottery on the ground. Now. Oh, oh well, yeah, maybe well, more than just, I haven't clicked happened. it. I just saw. Uh huh. I just saw some articles. 
Yeah, I did too. So it's thinking about it. Maybe the gold bond it t will take a moment, you know, or you didn't have enough wounds. I don't know. There yeah. you go. So that means now check your inventory and you should have a copy. You don't have to keep breaking it unless you wish to. <laughs> But it's up to you. Um, so here's the first one. It says, discovering what sparks the soul, leading to a, a life with purpose in small steps. His work mirrored the Ikigai five principles. And since the two of them work so well together, that's why we are blending them. Um, now, from a test engineer perspective, let me do the practical. If I was doing this, I would widen this sign, right? I would... I would stretch it, stretch everything, but I don't have permissions on mm. his stuff. Mm. And so my first act with Andy is, Andy, I need permissions. The second act is, Andy, everything has to be full permission <laughs> so that the team can collaborate and change things. And those are things we do together. But this one, he put together as a labor of love. And of course, um, as a point of healing for all of us, because we're still carrying that baggage, right? that pain of loss. Okay, moving along. And of course, this is a beautiful space. And look at all this mesh that he has created. What you have to realize is we don't go out and find mesh from other people or objects or anything. All the textures and the uh, mesh is created by Andy. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Even the emitter, um, he hasn't worked with emitters from others he's created his own now every once in a while i introduce him some propaganda i give him a tree or two that i found somewhere in world uh, and he will study it but he will make his own and so uh and notice there's a little winding path up this way mm -hmm. we're not i'm not going to roll that way but i noticed you can go have tea or sit and and dream and think you know, in the shadow of Sakurajima Volcano. The reason that looks a little bit different is he got this from Google Maps and Google Earth and, you know, and then and then modeled it. Oh, okay. the terrain? Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, okay. He decided to go for authenticity. We often build things and then we later change them to get them closer to the actual space. Uh, yeah. And so, and this is, like I said, it's only maybe a month old, maybe two weeks old. Mm -hmm. It's not very old. It was right before, uh, right around the time we were proposing the conference. Now there's another one up here. And see, I don't know what their numbers are because I'm not looking at the handy little map, you know? Mm -hmm. But <laughs> So we could go that way across the bridge or we could go up this way. Let's go up this way. All right. These stairs just look so interesting, right? And of course, he's not trying to make them look like stairs. He's trying I'm to make them small avatar. So I don't know if I can take such big steps. Uh, you may have to hop then. This is mm -hmm. when your page up key comes in handy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you can fly. Oh, in in our property, we allow we allow flight. We don't oh, stick to realism. And the reason is is because Cynthia is always busy. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, this time I'm going to uh, do the simulation, okay? okay? So we can see it from my perspective, what, what a user sees. And of course, we're getting a little more of the story here, connecting with others and nature in harmonious ways. And that's why we had the real little reflection spot midway up is to, of course, give people the opportunity to do just that. And he's put this slide content on the other side. Okay, so we click here. And by the way, we upgraded this grid recently. Um, it is now running the latest version of Open Simulator, 0.9.2.2, and uh, it's using Y-Engine. And we are using the Mariah database. Uh, so we're not using version 10 because that no longer syncs with some of the resources that we have here at for Open Simulator. Okay, now I'll touch the other side just to see if that's what stimulates it. And you'll notice it gave me an object. It told me, excuse me, it told me, let me, there we go, that um, the broken pottery, pottery shreds have been put back together by a wounded healer as Kintsugi pottery. And it's waiting for, oh, someone else broke it, is what happened. And so I got the message on it. So if I check my inventory, of course, 
which is of course a mess. Uh, recent is, is more recent than you ever would think, right? Uh, in the objects, I should have the stations, and I do. It gave me two of them. Yep. Quite possibly them because someone yep. else touched while I was, or my touch in the right side. Maybe this is all one thing, see? And so as a test engineer, I go inside this content, take a look at what he's doing. I normally study the script, look at um, the note card, the instructions that he's sharing, and so I didn't even realize we were getting a note card. Let me see. What does it say? Aha. So we get a note card as well. Uh, and this is to explain and also as a souvenir. And I love this. There's a quote here. Did I offer peace today? Did I bring a smile to someone's face? Did I say words of healing? Did I let go of my anger and resentment? Did I forgive? Did I love? Well, these are the real questions. I must trust that little bit of love that I sow now that will be many fruits here in this world and the life to come. Well, these are beautiful thoughts. Yeah, and lovely. I know when we were going through the conference, I know people were thinking, now, wait a minute. They're famous for doing the space program stuff and the, oh, and by the way, you're supposed to share a thought. Um, Might have been one the word. world, your gift. What? What's that? I've I've shared one one word beautiful surprise. <laughs> That's wonderful. It, 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 you can share anything, and they are going into a database. I will oh, tell okay. you, we are okay. doing research, and and I I have to admit I have clicked some of these and put in various themes. Um, I always uh, Lear. Well, yes. I just want to let you know that Lucena Hi, has Lucena. joined us. Yeah. Hi. Yep. Yeah, I see you. Okay. Hey, it's so good to see you. Well, we are here at the Kintsugi. Um, in Sakurajima. And if you want to join us, Liz, I'll give you the URL so you can pop over, or James will. Mm -hmm. That's if you can see the chat. Now, if, you, if you're comfortable where you are, we'll just take you on the tour. Yeah, we cannot hear you, but that's okay. Okay, there I am. We, I muted myself. You. What I'm trying to do is turn up my sound and my regular computer, and I can't... Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll keep talking so you can adjust the sound. And we are recording. I always like to let people know, right? Mm -hmm. Because you do have your camera on and, and you look gorgeous. But, you know, I always like to let you know. Behind me, I have a lot of dishes waiting for me and, <laughs> <laughs> and other things from last night or this morning. So, um, yeah, so I'm using a, a backdrop of my uh, hometown in yeah. snow. Hey, there's Joyce. Hey, hi. This is so far. This is just us. You know. <laughs> Joyce may Having have stepped good away for a short time. But... Yeah, yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. It's good to see everyone, and you have to realize this is like a little treasure for us. Now, I know this may sound seem weird. I know. I know people were looking at me like, "Oh my gosh, they do they do the Mars work in trying to figure out how we're going to live and breathe on Mars." This very serious research. So, what is the Sacrajima business, right? And of course, the goal here is each of us has been affected by not just COVID, but everything in our lives. And trying to recover is not something you just do overnight. You just don't get out there and, and feel quite the same, plus the sense of loss and sadness we have. And then our views of the world and others around the world, and of course, of conflict. So we built this to help and remind us of what matters most in life. So this theme was connecting with others and nature in harmonious ways. Well, that's two of our stations. Now we have a fork in the road. I'm going to let one of you pick which direction you'd like to go in. Will we go to the right or to the left? The left, let's take a peek. <laughs> the left has uh, more stations and the right seems to have a community center. So let's go to the left. Mm -hmm. I was gonna let you choose, but it's not much of a choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are signs though, and let's take a look. Now as a test engineer, what I would do here is I'd say, I'd stretch this vertically a little more so that the script is a little easier to read. I would also comment, and you have to realize we built this for us, right? Not for the world at large. Right, right. So we're not yep. thinking about, fonts that are friendly to persons with dyslexia, you know, who are exper experience it. And we're not thinking about um, 
some of these other things. But I'd be looking at this. I'd say you have two prims fighting for rendering here. You know, need to take care of that Z flickering. You know, and that's the kind of thing that I think about as the user experience. The and of course there are sounds, and I'm not playing any of my sounds. I'm not even sure they would you'd catch them on the recording. And the reason I don't is usually there's a lot of sound. Oh, he really? likes sound. And some of you may be hearing them, right? I have it turned down, but I'll turn it up. Well, there are some stations where I remember Algernon going through and testing it uh, a few weeks ago. And she said, well, that's a lot of sound. Whoa, and so okay. I just okay. put mine on zero. <laughs> uh, until I can share that kind of feedback. You have to realize sound is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I usually prefer it to be ambient and, and random, unless it's a waterfall, right? Yeah. Okay, so here we are. And this workstation, you know, it's kind of tricky getting up these steps. Notice I'm, yeah. so from the user experience, I would say, you know, and by the way, this this tip comes from Hubert Ubit Yumarov, is he always says, create a prim that's, um, you know, a rectangle that has been tapered, make it invisible and put it over here so everyone can walk over up. Over the stairs, yes. Over, yes. Yeah, and yep. you never have to worry about another stair in your life of any shape or whatever. You just got to have that invisible prim to the width of this opening and bam, you were up. Now I know strangers up there going, ha, ah, I did it, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> but of course I have heels on, okay? <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> Okay, so the theme of this one is really my favorite because this is my mantra. <laughs> Finding joy in the little things of life. Everything fascinates me. And for anyone who just joined us, Alessana, this is about the research of Henry Nguyen from the University of Notre Dame, who also was a researcher at Yale and Harvard in thinking about the wounded healer, you know, and and what kinds of messages and gifts these give to us. We have bridged it with our Ikigai um, work. And of course, I'm scratching my eye here. I have a skylight over me <laughs> and a window right here with, uh, you know, and mountain snow reflecting. So uh, I feel like I'm in a spotlight. It's like, <laughs> in any event. So let's do the next one and let's see who's with us. Um, has anyone not? No, you guys have all done it. I'll go ahead and do it just for the camera. So this is a beautiful piece of pottery. And of course, we're going to click here. And it gives us a piece of the pottery. It gives us the note card with the saying. And each one of them has a different saying, and then it's going to rebuild. Then here, what's going to be our gift to the future? And of course, it says to enter your reflections And mine's great joy and thanks. I'm very oh, thankful okay. to be here. And uh, to me, if we can share that with the world, that makes this a far better place. Now, the quote that I keep reading is this bottom one you see here on the note card that it gives you. And of course, it's kind of faint. And for the audience, for the video especially, and this is not a pro video. This is like a class. And I do this, oh, many times a week. <laughs> Here we go. When we honestly ask ourselves which person in our lives mean the most to us, we often find that it is those who, instead of giving advice, solutions, or cures, have chosen rather to share our pain and touch our wounds with a warm and tender hand. The friend who can be silent with us in a moment of despair or confusion, or who can stay with us in an hour of grief and bereavement, the person who can tolerate without knowing, not curing, not healing, and face with us the reality of our powerlessness, that is a friend who cares. What Andy's saying here is we have such strong bonds at Virtual Harmony. We've been together for 15 years as a loosely coupled weak tie network. I have something in my eye. My apologies. Oh. And... Uh, <laughs> And well, you we have, have some felt sun in your eye, it looks like. I do. I have like everything. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
we have felt powerless, you know, in the face of COVID and in the face of loss. Uh, we lost those eight children in a bus accident who who came to the farm and and spent time with Algernon, who writes children's books and and mm. speaks. And this was a little um, camp of kids who live in a special place in the mountains there, um, who are separated from their families, who are in recovery from pain and loss. And so these were children in need. They had gone on a field trip down to the shore. And when they came back, they died in a car accident. And, and unfortunately, there was a fire. And so we were so struck by with grief and bereavement, that it was really hard for us to continue working. So he's created this as a place of healing for us, mm. for all of us. Mm. And you'll notice it gives you the piece of pottery. So all these little pieces. Now, of course, I got to rebuild the pottery, right? Maybe it's the right side. Maybe it's not. Or maybe I'm supposed to be clicking on the pottery itself. And you'll notice the sparkles, the, the particles pick kick off. It gives me the saying again. And sure, we'll give two gifts to the world, right? <laughs> My next one is, of course, uh, well, it's obviously healing because healing is, well, we never forget those children and the people we've lost. We move on and we take with them um, discovery and hope for the future, the discovery of the world, the things that we're doing and why these spaces matter. See, it's not just the fact that I click an object and it breaks the pottery and then it gives me the note card and the, the message. It's the fact that my interaction with this work forms a connection. It's like that line in the movie Out of Africa at the end where she says, will Africa sing a song of me? Will the land quiver with the color that I have worn? Will the children make up a song in which my name is a part of it? You know, is there something that causes us to continue long after we're gone that makes an impact on our world? And that's what we're thinking about with these simulations. Well, now I, I'm shifting my attention to where do we go from here? <laughs> <laughs> we are down, aren't we? And the other simulations seem to be up and across a bridge. Maybe I was supposed to take the fork to the right and then over. Well, this is station four, it said. So that seems yeah. right. But we've only have we done four? I I think I skipped one then because look at maybe maybe it is right because you you and stranger handled the first one, yeah. so we need to get to five. Well, let's go this way, and I know there are bathhouses here, by the way, uh, where we all take a soak and we we celebrate Thanksgiving here <laughs> oh, okay. with lobster and crab, and you know, and of course it's virtual for anyone who would not eat such a thing, you know. Um, and that's the way to the bathhouse, I do think. But let's see. Oh, okay. Taking a peek. Taking a peek. Yeah, see, I think we need to backtrack. And I'm going to take the fast method. This is what I love about virtual worlds for anyone who's new to them. Okay. When I was at the crossroads, I was here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now I can grab my friends or they can fly over. Right. Yep. They're They're all very savvy. But if they weren't, I can send them a teleport. Offer oh, teleport. And that's what I love about these spaces. Yeah, I know you can fly here and you're probably already here, but I'm demonstrating for yeah, people yeah. who are not used to navigating. Now, what I did was, I'll tell you right now, I, I teach my students this. I say, you know, being able to move smoothly and well and fast is a power skill. This is why we teach here. <laughs> so we always go to the preferences, to the movement. And I always have teleport to clicked point, double click, right? Mm -hmm. So I have double click active. And then I always grab the people. So if I wanted to go see what James was up to or someone else, I double click their name and then I teleport to their location and voila, you know, super prof, right? Yep. <laughs> I wish I could do that in real life. Oh, that would too. be fantastic. But anyway, so we'll go this way. And of course, we could have walked back up the steps and come around, but I'm being lazy, right? And that's one of the joys in a virtual world. I do not have my animation override currently working. So you'll notice I'm given this little hop, right? That's fine. Mm -hmm. I do love, I will tell you right now, when I was a child, to be able to look down and see water 
and see little nestled areas and see little caves and that mm -hmm. that to me was a place of wonder and one of my favorite things in life and i was always hiding out in those kind of spaces ah so we get a tea ceremony when we're done yeah so here we are and we're at the fifth station and this one's called being present in each moment and place this is one that I don't always do well because I multitask. <laughs> so I will have a lot of monitors going. I will be in several different areas answering questions. I, I'll have, I have um, eight headsets, one that's been caffeinated. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I will toggle between lots of headsets and lots of different things. And I've trained my apps in Windows to allow me to have many different sound sources. And so um, being present requires me to stop for a moment <laughs> and to focus on one thing. And you'll notice today that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm ignoring all my other communication methods and things we're doing. And we're here just doing this one thing. And of course, this is a beautiful teacup. And so as we click and click on it, And I think what's happening there it goes. is it breaks. Oh, my, that's a lot of pieces. It that is. would be serious work to use Kintsugi to repair. Um, but it can be done. And there we go. Yes. So now we have our last station. And we have our pottery. And let's see. Now, what's cool about this, and for those of you who are not used to Open Simulator Worlds, is we know that scripts don't always behave, okay? And we know that uh, if it's going to misbehave, it will, especially during a demo. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, of course, the fact that it's working quite so well for something he put together so quickly oh, is, yeah. is indeed wonderful <clears throat> so here well, we are. i noticed even a little lag when i was moving so it, it just could there be is. internet and and uh, and what there is indeed what's well, also we when we went to y engine we started noticing that we were getting some lag as we're rendering different parts of the property oh, and okay. so um <clears throat> so we often sit and relax for a little bit and then go on these tours so this one tells us compassion asks us to go where it hurts, to enter into the places of pain and to share in brokenness, fear, confusion, and anguish. Compassion challenges us to cry out with those in misery, to mourn with those who are lonely, to weep with those in tears. Compassion requires us to be weak with the weak, vulnerable with the vulnerable, and powerless with the powerless. Compassion means full immersion in the condition of being human. You know, as I read these words, I'm thinking back to my early days in college. I was part of the AmeriCorps, which at the time was the Volunteers in Service to America. Uh, and of course, they had the Peace Corps, which most people know about. The, um, the AmeriCorps is here in this country. And it asks us to spend, to devote a year working with a population that's endangered, and in my case, I worked with 10-year-old boys who had had to use violence to survive. They had harmed some, at least one person, and they were in a juvenile program. And to help them heal and recover from this terrible event, we had to figure out what to do next. So I spent a year with them, 35 hours a week, in case you're wondering. And this is while I was going to school. <laughs> And I was taking 20 hours of classes, which is full time is 12 to 16. So my my excessiveness and excessive behavior began then. OK. And then anyway, but these boys taught me so much. But um, what a profound experience. Wow. It really was. It shaped my future. And um, it forced me to live in the neighborhood where they lived. And so they only gave me $200 to live on. And that included uh, rent, food, school, gas, everything. Okay. And even then, I know you're thinking, well, that was the dark ages. But um, <laughs> even then, you couldn't live on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I had to find a place. The only place I could afford had a gas leak. 
I thought I was going to blow up every day, right, every or die day. of gas. So I had to leave the windows open. Well, have you ever lived in an endangered space with the windows open uh, around the clock? <laughs> No. And of course, I did have problems towards the end, but uh, but it was a wonderful experience because I lived and walked mm -hmm. their walk and talk. You know, I understood their needs, and and we were suffering together, and and they do that with the Peace Corps too, where they do deep immersion, put you in with the folks, so that you have empathy for their con not just for their condition, but for the problems they face and how how they struggle to face those. You know, and so uh, it gave me a great humility. And well, so it's I'm interesting thankful. because that's something I've always liked about virtual worlds and open mm -hmm. simulators, the idea of, of empathy and, you know, Professor Chris Milk's, you know, virtual worlds being the empathy machine. That's right. And it will put you through an experience. The one thing it doesn't do is teach you what it's like to only be able to afford a carton of eggs for the next two weeks to live on. And you're like, hmm, well, I can make egg sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> but then you want bread right and of course i start to feel like i'm in a game only that was life uh, yeah wow. and what it was like and i would buy uh things that you know and stretch them in in amazing and interesting ways uh but anyway going through a year of that really teaches you um you know compassion and oh, and uh and a deep understanding of the the struggle the boys were having because the system didn't really understand why would you knife another person? Why would you shoot another person to survive? Why would you, well, why would that happen at age 10? And I says, Oh, I can see why that would happen now, you know, having had this experience. So, you know what I did with them? I did 4 H. I became an assistant cooperative extension agent. I volunteered my time. I took the boys out to the 4 H fair and had, we took care of 16 animals and we learned, and we, I knew nothing about taking care of animals on a farm. Okay. <laughs> So we were all doing it together, but, but people had dropped off their animals and weren't take, were, they weren't feeding them because they knew that quite possibly someone might buy them and they might become food. So they had just kind of emotionally detached, mm. but we were looking at them and say, wow, there's animals out here for a week without food, you know? So we took over and then uh, we went to camp. We went to, you know, summer camp, we went to a lot of different places and we, we started thinking about our world and how to make it a better place. And I took them through all the 4-H materials and uh, it, it was, it was just wonderful, really. And so um, by the end of the program, you know, I, I feel quite confident that they moved on to a far better life and I was a better person for it. So being present in each moment and place. Mm -hmm. Well, there's more to see at the property, but that's the primary part of our tour. I see we're only 44 minutes into our time. Maybe it's time for a cup of tea, huh? Okay. And uh, and we could take a bath, but <laughs> now I, I know that this ritual works, but I don't know quite how he activates it, you know, and it might be something he needs to do. You can click sit properly. And what it'll do is it'll override, like right now I have an animation override on, even though it's not completely working. And of course he's overriding it. So you have to click the menu option, sit properly, stranger. So click on your pillow and then you got a menu option in your upper right corner. There you go. There, yep. So he is, yeah, and he's put us all at an angle so that we can enjoy the view. Yep. <laughs> and of course, views. Let's talk about our camera. This is something we need to work on is the shared environment. I tend to spend a lot of my life either in sunset or sunrise, or I do a lot of customization of my world so that I can see the world with different kinds of lighting right now. And he likes it at midnight, by the way. This oh, is how he designs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I didn't. You know how it is. Yep. Uh, we start, we begin, I'm all about usability testing, right? But now when we stop to smell the roses, <laughs> I'm thinking, oh, the designer designed this from a, um, yeah, from a midnight perspective. With that in mind, right? Yes. But some areas are a little bit dark. They don't all have, have lighting. So of course I don't go to midnight immediately. Um, not naturally, but uh, that is how it's designed. And of course, 
Sacrojima has a lot of other simulations, just so you know. I will just let my camera wander through a few of them. Down the center, we have the little prayers and the little, uh, during COVID, we would we were very busy trying to figure out ways to heal our world. And of course, um, uh, this station back here is where you post them. Here, let me get closer. Looks almost like a, a way of posting them. And you can, I, I'm nowhere near it, so gosh knows how it would work right now. I suppose I could stand and go there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks like I hit one of his seating arrangements. Yes, I did. Or I took, yep, that's the bench. And uh, when you click on some of these, you can also do this simulation as well. It has told me to look in my inventory for a folder called Ema and the, and and to um, to then do what it says. These are little prayers for the future. And you may wonder, are we of of a faith that does this kind of thing? Not really. We are a mixture of faiths um, that all come together. But we still want the best for our world. It doesn't matter our personal beliefs. Uh, we all come together with great respect for each other. Now, I'm not sure what it gave me. Um, it's here somewhere. Probably in my note cards. Nope, I don't see it. There's supposed to be a folder here. And I just have too many things. Let me do a filter. For those of you who are ever teaching in World and you're trying to demo your stuff, I'm showing 21 days of stuff. That would be why. There we mm. go. Let's just try one. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay. So whatever it was supposed to give me, it did not give me at this time. So from a usability testing perspective, I'd say, Andy, this station here needs an update. And the uh -huh. reason it does is we designed this under X engine for scripting. And now we are under Y engine. So all of our scripts needed a little update, you know, and, a, and a, some usability testing to check on their behavior but hey look at you guys you found me <laughs> I'm, I'm a mini map person so i'll just find I, dots on the mini map oh and get see myself there. so you're pulling up this little guy and using it i don't yep. use this very often because well to me it's always just a little odd you know but uh it's good that you you're active with the mini map yep. i notice other people use it too it's from um, gaming i think Oh, sure. Well, I use mini maps, but I need them to be super large, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to enlarge the contents on the map. I need it to pop out. Um, otherwise, I, I don't see very well. So, yeah, right. I do fairly well for someone who can't see, though. Uh, <laughs> very, very true. Yeah. But there you go. Oh, sure. There you yep. go. And you can see we have walkways and we have um, beautiful. Oh, stranger, I'm echoing from your microphone. Actually, it might be mine. It might be Lisanna's. No, Lisanna, did you want to add something there? Strangers. Yeah. That's no, okay. I was just smiling along. Oh, good. Well, you know, you're always welcome out and you know how we are. We um we have many, many simulations and many grids, but this is what we're doing to feed our inner spirit. OK, and of course, each of us has a cabin here and and uh, everyone's name. See, Algernon is Dr. Stricker's wife, Betty Stricker, who is a children's author and uh, one of our team and J.J. Drinkwater. Uh, who was the librarian of Caledon and also is our science fiction librarian. This is her house. We, each of us has a home in virtual harmony everywhere we go, every property. And so uh, that makes it nice. Yep. yep. And there's mine. And JJ's nearby. Skylark is Algernon's sister. So we brought family out here too. So this oh, is a okay. family event too. Yeah, it's not just the research team. Uh, here's Delightfuls. Okay. And yep. so uh, Barbara Truman's space. Mm -hmm. And some of her spaces she decorated and others she did not. Um, this is just the base set up and then she's put a few things up here for tea. Oh, and sushi. She knows how I love sushi. <laughs> Me too, All right. Yeah. But anyway, she's always with us. Well, that's kind of the the composite of our tour for today. But I want to thank the Open Simulator Community Conference 
and um, my organizing team, you, James, for the made for the streaming, Joyce Betancourt for being the mastermind behind all of this, and everyone for pulling it all together. See, now you can see, I, I like to see all the textures, by the way, <laughs> which is why I like the different lighting. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I want to thank everyone, all our volunteers, Lucena for greeting people, Stranger for helping to show us the user experience, because we need new people to come by and show us what is it like to be new and, and how can we support and strengthen our world, you know, through these um through these sim not just simulations and our shared events but it, uh, to stimulate our developers we're very thankful for our developers uh, without you developing the software developing the viewers we wouldn't have this experience so we really need everyone to feel energized and on fire for another year spent in virtual worlds and that's why we do this it's not just to gather and and uh to show cool tech, it's really to think through, notice that was the sculpty, right? He did a sculpty there hmm. <laughs> for that door. And I always love looking at that, you know, when things deform or reform. Um, I don't know if you were on the um, Arcadia Asylum tour, but on that tour, they explained how they're converting some of those sculpties into mesh uh, yeah. to get to get yep. them to not deform like that and to, to behave under certain conditions a little bit better. And of course, curating the work of people who have gone before us are fallen, you know, uh, is a very powerful thing to do. It's our, it's, it's a shared legacy then, and we are part of that experience. And so I want to reach out and thank everyone who attended the conference, who spoke at it, and of course, to everyone who made it possible. Well, that's my remarks for today. Okay. Um, why don't I turn the floor over to our guests? Lucena, did you have anything you wanted to add? As I poke I... the other eye? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was very glad to be able to get here. Actually, we talked about sushi. I was running to get sushi for unexpected oh, guests. That's I have not I... eaten today. <laughs> oh, no. I brought some crackers close, but I didn't get them open. Uh -huh. <laughs> So this is a lovely space, and I, of course, I love the whole feeling behind it and the oh, intention yeah. that it represents. It's so you, amazing. Yeah, yes, you mentioned ahead. that that Andy did a lot of the building. But, he did all uh, of it. What are you talking did, about? <laughs> well, no, no, no. I mean, you know, some of the objects you said were actually, uh, you know, designed the terrain, but uh, were any of the buildings uh, uh, retrieved from uh, stores or? No. Or other other no. Um, open no, sim let's take a look. Yeah, I know I know it's quite easy to now get yourself as the creator of everything you upload, but he does it yeah. all. Yeah. So what he does, and so if I showed you, let me take you behind the scenes for just a moment. Mm -hmm. Um here we go. On the grid dashboard. If we went to Pompeii, which is currently offline, you'll notice there's a volcano there, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, if I showed you the terrain map, it's the same uh, overall. Uh, for this. However, for this event about a few weeks ago, he decided to grab from Google Maps and Google Earth theirs and then turn it into mesh and then bring it in here. So <clears throat> I guess this is kind of like something that's, I don't know if I can actually go there. Yeah, I can. <laughs> so it's not hanging off the, the server property, but this is something that's coming from the real world how it looks, obviously it's not erupting, okay? Mm -hmm. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, because I looked at the mountain and I said, you know, Andy, the mountain has changed, you know? It used to be a repurposed Pompeii and now what is it, you know? And of course, um, he, he just, he was trying to go for more realism. So like when we do the Grand Canyon or when we do Mars, we used to use our version of the Grand Canyon and retexture it for Mars. <laughs> In the uh, early okay. days, you know, 15 years ago. Oh, and now, Perfect. no, no. Now he goes and gets the actual maps and, and he gets a lot of content from NASA and brings that into those simulations. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's but no, wonderful. this is this is stuff he did. It, it is amazing to work with someone who's a brilliant researcher. 
He taught quantum mechanics and intelligent agents at, at Oxford for Donald Broadbent. Oh, okay. And Donald Broadbent is famous for his coining the term selective attention. So if you're familiar with his work. And Broadbent came to the Air Force Academy when Andy was teaching statistics there. He was teaching it not in the traditional way. He would take the students down to the library and he'd rip open the map room and he'd pull out the maps and throw them across the table. And he'd say, okay, now we're going to think about how statistics apply to this experience of how you find yourself and how you think about your world and how you think about what's happening in it. And he would tell little stories and the cadets just loved that. And he became famous for his little stories. So Broadbent came from Oxford to the Air Force Academy here in Colorado Springs, scooped Andy up and said, I need him to take a sabbatical to come teach at Oxford. Okay. And Andy and I, how we're connected is we went to high school and college together. And I was the little bully female who would, we would walk along and I have a grocery sack of books and I'd say, Andy, you need to do this. And Andy, you need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of that girl, you know, and, um, and all throughout our lives, you know, we, we've always had a commitment to our world and to thinking about the world in really strange and interesting ways. Where we went to school, I would go up a tree and read books on the school property and watch the world walk by under me and watch the leaves fall and think about the world. And I was painfully shy, see? Oh, Whereas okay. with Andy, I was never shy because we would always talk, you know. And we took all these very thoughtful classes together and and uh, we took classes in general semantics and and in thinking and having great respect for everyone. And so, you know, he, uh, I wrote an article for the Edge of Cause Review in 2008 for the Back to School edition about my classes. And Andy saw it and said, oh, my gosh, are you the same one? I said, could there be another <laughs> <laughs> with my name, you know? So and so, uh, yeah. Yep. And so he reached out and asked me to join the team. And I've never left. Uh, ever since then, we've been doing uh, simulations together and and by the way, we do lots of different simulations, but he's doing most of the mesh and design and scripting for them. And I do the critique and say, Andy, we need to make this a little more usable. Uh, this is where we'll be on Sunday. We're going to be celebrating Christmas. And of course, we did Capri to celebrate during COVID, right, with our cruise ship and all our wonderful stuff. Huffman Prairie is where you take off in a rocket and nowadays when you get in the rocket oh, it's a dazzling set of commands and controls you have to you have to power it you have to fuel it you have to do everything yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> before you can take there. off right. yeah it's pretty wild and then when you take off you wind up on a different grid as you're flying you wind up on uh the mars outpost right right so it flies from one and these are grids these are Very not effective. regions yeah. and the reason we're using grids is he has learned he can get better performance and more grids active at the same time through his architecture now, UBIT has another thought on that. So uh, that that's a wonderful conversation for anyone who's hosting regions and grids. This is where I teach on Lobo. He was calling it Lobo World. And I said, oh, Andy, I feel like an amusement park or something. And I'm not, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my, my place is yeah. messy. That's where students get messy and everyone designs projects. Meanwhile, we have McMurdo Station, which was one of Barbara Truman's loves. This is where we went to the Antarctic. And I'm watching the time. I see we're about out of time. Uh, but we have a lot of fun exhibits there. And we have a game we play uh, where we have to find missing things and, and of course retrieve them then she loved racing so we created a grand prix we even have a drive-in there <laughs> and a bowling oh alley my. that works okay yep. Yep. so we go bowling yeah and that was for barbara it's called preaks is, is extreme well we bring it online we took these some of these offline so we would have stability today uh, new harmony was our first site and that's modeled after New Harmony, Indiana, a place where two utopian societies in real life um, worked. And they created over 300 in inventions and um, a, a forerunner for the arts and industries building at the Smithsonian, that architecture, and a bunch of other stuff. And then here's where we are at Sacrojima. Yeah. Uh, Slippery Rocks Falls is a series of games that we have. 
And some of them are quite elaborate and some of them are team building. And of course, character strengths for Lucena <laughs> and her research. Uh, she worked with the researchers who were responsible for the theory behind it and studied with them. Meanwhile, we have Pompeii where you can do chariot races and we do. We hop into chariots and go around Circus Maximus, you bet. And of course, you'll notice the volcano in the background. Mm -hmm. And then the planetarium is now a copy of it sitting on OSCC and that was devoted to Barbara Truman. Right. right. And then uh, Jack's world is a dinosaur world that Andy built in two weeks with his nephew, eight-year-old Jack, who came to stay with him that summer. And in two weeks, they built all these dinosaur mesh models and uh, automated them and created this great experience and a learning uh, museum attached to it. And the departure for it is from, from space. So when you're in uh, the catacombs below Mars and you're looking for the um, Stargate, we, we, it, it's all realistic until you get to the Stargate, okay? <laughs> okay. And then that takes you over, um, uh, the catacombs take you over to Jack's world. Then Interstellar is where it takes you if you go through the Stargate. Um, it, it loads Interstellar, which is based on the movie and a, a fanciful place that we were thinking about the deep thoughts. We Meanwhile, we created a game that's grid, it crosses all the grids and you're looking for dragon eggs. And it begins here in the Highlands. And so there's a bunch of puzzles and stuff. And then last but not least, this is where we celebrated graduation for students during COVID who couldn't get out. And of course, we had scuba diving and dancing and you name it. And of course, our cruise ship is on the Tranquility Sea. And we have others too, variety. but these are the ones, yeah, yeah that we have yep. Uh, available. Yep. So... That's that's uh, our work at Virtual Harmony. And I want to thank everyone for coming out today and for joining us at the conference. Any last thoughts there, Joyce? Let's see. You're muted, by the way. Sure. Um, there you go. You might, you, uh, I mean, thank you, Lear, for doing this. And uh, I might say that you might remind folks too of the, the planetarium region that is uh, in the grid, in the OSCC yeah, yeah. grid. Right. Um, I thought I said that. She did um, cover it. Oh, did she? Oh, then yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. But yes. But great minds think alike, right? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but that's definitely a place, obviously, like besides this hypergrid um, Absolutely. tour that folks can continue to keep visiting that throughout the year. Check out the new updates to the planetarium. That's right. And the planetarium is cool. There's a lot of hidden things. There's a lot of games and stuff. And if something's not working, let us know. Right now it's an experiment because you have to realize we have Y engine scripts on it. Um, so if something's not working, we are going to be upgrading the OSCC for 2024, I think. And uh, when we do, we now have a test bed for, for testing any changes to scripts and how we can get everything flowing smoothly. We did all that. I say we, Andy did all that in like uh, less than a week, <laughs> which is speed, really speed demon. Yeah. yeah. Considering he works full time and he writes, he writes a blog each week on AI and strategy, and he's read a thousand books to prepare that blog, you know, so um, he's busy, busy. <laughs> wow. But anyway, well, gosh, thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you, Lear. This is this is great, and I think uh, I think with that, I'll end our recording, and okay. so uh, we'll uh, we'll work on on getting that published. So thank you, everybody, and then uh, we can stay here and chat. Anyone who has uh, further questions, but we can consider this the end of our of our program. Bye, everyone. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>